This is State Street. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God is good and all the time. Y'all help us sing this morning. Oh, time is filled with swift transition. Oh, not on earth unmoved. Build your hopes on things eternal. Oh, to God's unchanged. So shine before me, and that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of this word. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, humble stand before you this morning. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Lord, Heavenly Father, just giving you the glory, honor, and the praise you deserve, and you're so worthy of, Lord. Just thanking you for this another day, Heavenly Father, yes. for this is the day that you have made. And, Lord, we're going to rejoice and be glad it is, Heavenly Father. We thank you for watching over us other night as we slept and slumbered. Lord, we could have been on our cooling board, but you saw fit to let us live and see another day. Lord, you touched us with the finger of love and woke us up this morning. And then you started us on our way, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for giving your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who hung up and bled down the old Calvary. Lord, he paid a price was so high we couldn't pay it. He paid, he paid in full with his blood. And now he sits way up high on the right hand of your throne. And he looks way down low. And what he did way back then, he's still doing the same thing today, healing and pouring out blessings. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for the many blessings, your grace, your mercy, your unchanging hand. 
the same hand today as it was yesterday, Heavenly Father. We thank you for never leaving, never forsaking, never turning your back on us, Lord, Heavenly Father. Lord, Heavenly Father, just thankful, Lord, for the many blessings. We ask you to bless this church, Heavenly Father. This congregation, Lord, all auxiliaries, we ask you to bless our pastor, Reverend Courtney Warren, and his yeah, family, Lord. Say it, say it. We ask you to touch him, Lord, in a certain way that he may bring a message that we can take in and be so powerful that someone might come running and ask him, what must they do to be saved, Lord? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for you never, never leave us, Lord. Say it, say it. And we need you, Lord. Every minute, every hour, every second, Lord, we need you. Heavenly Father, you know what we all stand in need of, Heavenly Father. We, Lord, Lord, I, I ask you to bless the sick and the shut in. Bless the ones who are under the sound of my voice, Lord, and their families. Bless the ones who wanted to be here and couldn't this morning, Lord, and just bless the ones that just didn't come. Lord, Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless this choir this morning as we sing in Zion. We ask you to manifest yourself in us, Lord that we sing like we never sung before, Lord, have fun. Lord, it's just so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, Lord, and I, and I feel good this morning, Lord, and, I, and it's all you. For you said if one or two gathered in the name of the Lord, you would be in the midst, Lord, and I ask you to fill this building, Lord, Heavenly Father, and move from heart to heart, breast to breast, Lord, Heavenly Father, church to church, and state to state, like I know you will. I love you so much, Lord, Heavenly yeah. Father, and I'm just... I'm just overwhelmed with the joy, the peace, and the happiness. For you stood at the door and knocked. And I opened the door and let you in. And you came in and filled me up with the Holy Spirit. The love, the joy, the peace, and the happiness, Heavenly Father. And I just, I'm just overwhelmed with it this morning, Lord. And I'm just so glad to be here. Heavenly Father, I, I pray for the homeless, the sick, the shut in, the incarcerated, the people in the nursing homes and hospitals. And Lord, uh, I want to get personal. I, I have to get personal this morning. Lord, I pray for my wife, my children, my grandkids, my brothers, yeah, sisters, nieces, yeah. and nephews, aunts, uncles, cousins, brother-in-laws, and sisters-in-laws, daughter-in-laws. I pray for my neighbors, Lord, Heavenly Father, and I pray for my co-workers, employers. I pray for my enemies, Lord, Heavenly Father, the ones who trespass against me, Lord, because I got to love them and forgive them, Lord, because if I don't, you won't forgive me. Heavenly Father, I... I just wanna, I just wanna live. I wanna live how you created me to live and do the things that I was created to do, Lord, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray for the ones who are too proud to make a joyful noise. Uh, for the Lord, for you said if, if we're ashamed of you in front of me and you will be ashamed of us before the Father, Lord. So, Lord, uh, I pray that we can just let go and let God. Let go and let God. That's all we got to do. Put him first. Lord, you just, you just keep on, Lord. It ain't no secret what you can do. It ain't no secret, Lord, Heavenly Father. And if we let go and let God, oh, Oh, oh boy, we'd be, we'd be so wonderful, Lord. It'd be a wonderful place to live, Lord. I pray for the ones who are hating. Life's too short to hate, Lord, Heavenly Father. Life's too short to hate, Lord. We gotta keep our eye on the sparrow. Lord, we gotta, we gotta live and do like Jesus. We gotta love one another. We gotta lift one another up. Stop worrying about other people and, and sweep around our own front doors. Quit talking about one another and love one another. I'm just, I'm overwhelmed this morning, Lord, but I, I'm going to step away from this prayer, but never from your presence. And it's in the name of Jesus, this holy great name, I ask it all and I pray for Christ's sake, amen. amen.
thing that happened to you who did it. And Amen. Amen. Good morning, State Street. Good morning. If we have any visitors with us who are just visiting with us for the first time, if you would be so kind as just to stand and give us your name and any words that you'd like to share with us. Well, it's good. Amen. 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 So on behalf of our pastor and the members and deacons of State Street, please consider yourself welcome. And anytime he comes and you want to come, you come on. And if he don't want to come, you come on anyway. We're glad to have you this morning. Real quick, the announcements. Hey, y'all, God's good. God's good. Check them out on the, the TV screen out front. That's for your review, but I'm just going to share some cards that have been sent to the church that we would like to be respectful and share those with you as well. This one says, bless you. I have not stopped giving thanks to God for you, Ephesians 1.16. The Lord works wonders through wonderful people like you. Thank you. The family of Thelbert Granger, Jr., thank you for your kind expression of love to us. And this is during his passing, and this comes from our own sister, Dorothy Granger, who's his sister-in-law. Amen. Thank you. With sincere thanks and appreciation, thanks for the beautiful plant. And this comes from Sister Rachel Butts. Um, and she's at home, so please thank God for that, Amen. that she's back at home. Amen. If the Lord is willing, I hope to see each and every one of you next Sunday. And please be safe. Amen. And be blessed. Amen. The church say amen. amen. The church say amen again. Amen. Uh, thank you, Sister Blakey, for that song for reminding us that everything that happened to me that was good, that God did it. I'm reminded of a Bible verse that sometimes we have to find the Holy Writ to help substantiate and find our foundation. And the Bible says that, and we know that all things work together. For the good of those that, what? Love the Lord. And to those that are called, what? According to his purpose. So if God has called you, it doesn't matter if it feels good, if it looks good, if it sounds good, if it's bad in your eyes, that God will get the glory out of every single thing that he puts you through because sometimes that God has to get our attention, but he means it for our good. For everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Uh, first, give it on to God, who's the head of our lives. It's such an honor and a privilege for you to join me in this space and in this place as we what? Embrace God's grace. Amen. To those that are watching online, I want to thank you because as I usually say every Sunday, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart, that you could have tuned in anywhere. Every church seems to be online right now. You could have been anywhere, but here you are right here in our virtual sanctuary here at State Street Baptist Church. So I want to thank you so much for tuning in with us on this Sunday. Y'all excuse me, I'm still feeling good after J5. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The greatest fraternity known to God and man is none other than that of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Amen. 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 It is now time for our mission statement. I ask that you stand all over the building as we read our mission statement. Uh, please excuse our tardiness of, of administrative because our printer has ran its number of copies, so we're getting it serviced this week. But you will have, for those that do not have a copy, you will have a copy soon, and we'll have those in the pews for you. But those that do have your mission statement with you, we ask that you please stand all over the building and as we recite it all together. The State Street Baptist Church seeks to engage the sinner, equip the saints, and exalt the Savior. 
Our focus is to offer unconditional love with unrestricted service. We are dedicated to being witnesses for Christ with fellowship, truthfulness, and selfless service with the highest standard of excellence. We're also dedicated to embracing every person with the utmost level of dignity and respect in according with the word of God. God demonstrated diversity when creating us, yet saved us all equally. We believe in the triune God. As Christ was actively involved in his community, we believe we should be active in the local population as well as the world. Through a variety of programs and services, we will strive to cultivate a ministry of physical, intellectual, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Being obedient and honoring God's word, we understand our faith produce works. So with thanksgiving, prayer, and meditation, we will become a living sacrifice which is holy and acceptable unto Christ. Hey, Amen. I ask that you continue to stand as we have our song of the month, our um, Take Me Back selection. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody knows something that it was amazing grace. Amen. Uh, amazing grace. Uh, if you look towards the back of the sanctuary, you will see two little people at our front doors. Amen. I want to thank God for our youth that is now that is ushering under the direction of Sister Franklin. Thank you. Wait, yeah, Sister Franklin. I saw you. There you go. <laughs> under the direction of Sister Franklin, Sister Claypool, Sister Center. So much. Thank you. Because I truly believe where the youth don't lead, they leave. 
Let me say that one more time. Where the youth don't lead, they lead. So it is an opportunity for us to show the youth that they are just as important and they matter to the battle body of Christ as well. So one more time, let's give our youth, our young people a hand clap of praise for ushering on today. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, if you notice as you came into the sanctuary this morning that uh, thank God for all those who participated to help get it started. Um, our display board, our digital sign outside, amen, to all those that captured the vision and took it and uh, ran with it. That, that is where our announcements will be going from this point forward here in the sanctuary, here in the church body. So if you uh, need to know about any announcement, upcoming announcement, events in the city, the weather, the we even have the ticker scroll going across it that me and Deacon Dearborn can change it at a blink of an eye, so some days we have sports going across it. Hate to see my Titans. That's why I deleted that group message. No. <laughs> Amen. But all your information can be found there. Also, it can be found on our social media sites as well. So if you have not went to the website, please go to the website and log in to the member portal, okay? The website has a member portal, okay? And once you go there, you can actually go through it on your phone, and there's an app that is on your phone as well. So it's the click of a button, you get all the news and information right here on the street at State Street Baptist Church, amen? Amen. 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 All right, now time for a little fun. Uh, in my hand, I got something very special right now but y'all know how I am. So y'all know on Christmas service, we were supposed to have our ugly Christmas sweater service, amen? But our water and our pipe decided not to let us be great on that Sunday. So what we have to do is postpone it. As you guys know that uh, Marvin Sapp is coming on the 13th of January, amen? Marvin Sapp is coming, and he is right here in our own city, Bowling Green, Kentucky. So what I got in my hand is some t are some tickets. My English majors will get me for saying that. <laughs> are some tickets to Marvin Sapp. But y'all know pastor just ain't going to just give them to you, right? So here we go. I'm watching online, and I'm watching in the sanctuary as well, okay? Somebody that's watching online has the opportunity right now to win a pair of Marvin Sapp tickets, and somebody in the sanctuary has an opportunity to win a pair of Marvin, Marvin Sapp tickets. So here we go. The first hand that I see that is raised in the sanctuary, <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> And the first one that's watching online right now, if you comment, okay, if you comment, you have an opportunity, the first one to comment. So here's the first question right here. Before Marvin Sapp went solo, what was the name of the group that he was a part of? Okay, we got somebody that commented, Miss Leanne Michelle Jones commented. She stated commission, so she is our winner for our second pair of Marvin Sapp tickets right here on January the 13th. Okay, so it seems like everybody that's in the music industry belongs to some sort of organization. So here it is again, first hand in the sanctuary. And the first one to comment online, what fraternity does Marvin Sapp belong to? Oh, there we go. Talk about the Sapp Fraternity Incorporated. There we go. If you're smart online, you would have heard them give the answer and you would have typed it in right by now. 
He is a member of the greatest fraternity known to God and man. That is Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, 112 years old. Amen, amen. So, okay, so I got two more pair of tickets. So, looks like I'm going to have to go deep theologically on y'all now. Yeah, we're going to go deep on y'all. I gave y'all the easy questions right there. So, let me find some questions that's hard. Maybe if you came to Bible study, you'll get these right. <laughs> okay. In what language was the Old Testament written? I see a hand right there. <laughs> In what language was the Old Testament written? Hebrew. There we go. Hebrew. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Okay, I got somebody that's watching online. They said Kelvin or David said Hebrew. All right, you got your two tickets right here to see Marvin Sapp. Amen. That's all the tickets that I have. I want to thank you all for participating. If I get any more that is blessed, I'm blessed with any more, then I will certainly uh, will be giving them out on Bible study. Amen. Please make sure that you watch each and every one of our announcement posts. There are some services that are changing just a little bit, but want to keep you all in the loop with everything. Amen. Uh, some uh, very important announcements that next Monday we will have the MLK program here beginning at 11 a.m. Amen. But I hope to see you there as well at the breakfast at 7.30 a.m. at the The community center, name of it, whatever Mark name of it. Is. There we go, amen. <laughs> that there'll be a 7:30 breakfast there, our very own within our district, not our very own here at State Street, but we'll minister a district around the corner, Little Zion. Pastor Tim Stanley will be the keynote speaker. We'll meet at the Justice Center and we'll march down State Street and we'll have our service here. Amen. 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 For any other announcements that you may need to be aware of, once again, online. Facebook, and in our vestibule, in our lobby as well. Is there anybody here ready for a word from the Lord today? All right. Amen. We have uh, started this sermon series for the 2023, actually, but we want to kick it off uh, with rebuilding the walls here at State Street Baptist Church. Rebuilding the walls here at State Street Baptist Church, and one, one of the greatest lessons that we can ever learn from a literal standpoint comes from the book of Nehemiah in which we learned last week that Nehemiah was a cupbearer of King Artaxerxes of Persia. He was in a prominent position but he got word that the home of his ancestors would lay in ruins and it bothered him so much because here he is living the good life but his people are suffering. And he wanted to go down and rebuild the walls. But before he rebuilt the walls, he went to the Lord in prayer. He teaches us that that is what we should do. Before we take on any project, take on anything, that we should pray and go to the Lord about the situation. So if you have your Bibles, just go ahead and meet me after the next election from the choir. We'll still be in Nehemiah, the first chapter. We want to lift up in your hearing verses 8 through 11 as we continue our sermon series of Rebuilding the Walls with today's sermon title, It Starts with Prayer, Part 2.
Think about all the things 
that God has done for you, then your testament to yourself should be that my hallelujah, my highest praise belongs to you. That's a personal message right there. That when you're talking to the master and you look back over your life, there were some situations that you knew that it was nobody but God who brought you thus far. So therefore, Lord, my hallelujah belongs to you. I was very conflicted when LeBron James went to go play for the Lakers because I'm not a LeBron fan, but I belong to Laker Nation. And I have caught several games, and although I'm not a fan of LeBron, and I am a fan of Laker Nation, I still find myself cheering for LeBron when he makes a shot. Don't get me wrong, Steph Curry is a great shooter, pure shooter, and I love to see Golden State play. But I belong to the purple and gold. Although I don't like LeBron, I still, I still cheer, scream, holler, and get mad when they lose a game. There are some things in your life you just don't like. There are some things in your life that didn't go as you planned for it to go. But when you look over your life, as a whole, you still cheer, you still give praise, you still give thanks because you're loyal, because you're dedicated. And I just want to know, is there anybody in here in the building this morning that just want to give God their best praise right now? 2022 may have been a rough year. You didn't like it, but you are still here right now in this sanctuary. Can somebody give God some praise right now? Your hallelujah belongs to him. may not have been your best year. You may not like the players that's playing in your life right now. But because you're loyal to the team, Jesus. Somebody had a health scare, but you remain loyal to team Jesus. Somebody has some problems on their job, but because you remain loyal, to Team Jesus. Somebody has some issues in their family right now, but because you are loyal to Team Jesus, your hallelujah, your best right. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah belongs to you. He deserves it. <laughs> you deserve it, Lord. I could have been dead sleeping in my grave. But as the old saint said, Lord, you made death behave. You deserve it, Lord. I'm here another day because of you. I could have been stretched out right here. People could have been viewing me right now. But here...
deserve it. Not just some thanks, not just some praise, but Lord, all my praise and my best praise. If, if I can cheer for the Titans like I do, if I can cheer for the Lakers like I do, if I can cheer for Nashville Soccer Club like I do, and ain't nobody on that team ever done anything for me but Jesus one Friday on a hill called Calvary. It's all right, you can praise him. It's all right, you can praise him. <laughs> There's nobody. I've searched all over. Highs and lows, mountain tops and valleys, and I still haven't found anybody greater than you, Lord. Ooh. Ooh, I gotta get in this word. I gotta get in this word. have your Bibles, whether the hard copy or the electronic version, I ask that you meet me at the first chapter of the book of Nehemiah. I'm going to lift up in your hearing verses number 8, 9, 10, and 11. As we continue with our sermon series of rebuilding the walls, if you're physically able to stand, then I ask that you stand for the reading of God's holy word. Nehemiah, the first chapter, beginning at verse number eight, you're reading the NIV version. It says, remember the instructions you gave your servant Moses, saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was cupbearer to the king. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to continue with part two of the sermon series. It begins or it starts with prayer. As we discuss, uh, uh, I apologize, excuse me. 
Let us pray. Lord, we come to say thank you. I want to thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for just being God and God all by yourself. Where you sit high and you look low, Lord. That you woke us up, Lord, this morning with a touch of your love through the fingertip, Lord, and, and, and Lord, that you gave us a reasonable portion of our health and strength, Lord, that my last night lying down wasn't on my cooling board, and my sheets wasn't my winding sheets, that I'm, I'm being greeted instead of viewed this morning, Lord. For that, Lord, we say thank you, Lord, that we have clothes on our back and shoes on our feet and food on the table and a roof over our heads, Lord. For that, we say thank you, Lord. And Lord, if you don't do anything else for us, you've done enough when you send your son Jesus to die for us, Lord. We love you and we praise you. But Lord, I'm asking right now, Lord, as I begin to preach your word, as I lift you up, because you said if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Not unto me, Lord. Courtney is just a frail human, be human being right now. But Lord, I'm asking that you use me. You speak to me and you speak through me, Lord. You bless me as you bless your people right now. Hide me so they can see thee, Lord. Lord, give me the spiritual energy and the physical strength to preach your word today, Lord. With clarity, Lord. With humility, Lord. With humbleness, Lord, with strength, Lord, that somebody's heart that isn't right can be changed, Lord. That somebody's heart that has disease right now, Lord, can get well, Lord, because we know that you are a doctor who's never lost a patient, Lord. Oh, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the church all together say, Amen. We've come to understand that prayer is a tool. A tool given to us by God when we accept his son, Jesus the Christ, as our Lord and Savior. Prayer is the tool that we use to communicate with God. It's like a radio that uh, you send out a signal. There has to be a transmitter and it must be a receiver. It's kind of like when I'm driving up here that there's one station in Tennessee but as soon as I cross the state line, it switches to another station. Depending on where you are in your life, sometimes the music, sometimes the information that's being put out during prayer, during the radio station changes. But you must have a sender and a receiver. I thank God. That he's given me the authority. I thank God that he's given me a right to be a sender where I can send, I can talk to him, and he receives it. Last week we understood that Nehemiah received some bad news, some disheartening news that. The Israelites are scattered abroad. Nebuchadnezzar is no longer on the scene. There's King Darius and there's Cyrus and there's Audie Herses now. And this Hebrew, this Israelite, has made his way into the king's palace. Not sweeping floors, Deacon Jackson, not wiping down the walls. Not Deacon Carver cutting the grass, but he is the cupbearer to the king. A very, a very important task at hand. For he's responsible for tasting everything that's in that king's cup before the cup 
before the cup gets to the king. If it's going to kill the king, it's going to kill him first. He's literally putting his line, his life on the line. But he finds out through a series of letters that his home to his ancestors are in ruins. The wall is torn down. The temple has been decimated. The Assyrians have repopulated the northern kingdom amongst themselves, and the southern kingdom just is not recognizable anymore. And Nehemiah is sitting up here, and he's hurt. He's sad. He's angry. Because here he is in a place of comfort. But the Jews who have went back home are not having such a good time. So Nehemiah wants to do something. And the first thing that Nehemiah thinks about is saying, I must protect the city. So therefore, Kevin, he decides that I need to rebuild the walls. But before I take on this project, let me pray. We found out that he prayed last week a prayer of recognition. He recognized that the supremacy of God, the sufficiency of God, the sanctity of God, and the security of God. That God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. We learned last week that Nehemiah prayed a prayer that highlighted the stipulations of God. For them that love him and observe his commandments. That God can be the supreme God. He can be the sufficient God, the sanctity God, the God that offers security if you meet his stipulations. That's what Nehemiah prayed. He, he didn't pray one of these long-winded prayers that talking about nothing. No, he, he, he got straight to the point, the thing that he needed the most. But then he did a prayer of resignation as well. And we learned the plea, the passion, the persistence, and the perception. The plea, he said, let thy ear now be attentive and thy eyes open. He said, Lord, hear my prayer, but see what I'm asking you to do. But then the passion that thou mayst hear the prayer of thy servant. Because although I'm in the king's palace, doesn't mean that I serve this king as my king. Because I have a king over here that has guided me, that's been the king of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That when I needed some help, when my ancestors needed some help, he sent a servant by the name of Moses to go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And when they get to the Red Sea where Pharaoh's army behind them and the Red Sea in front of them, that the Lord opened up the Red Sea and they was able to walk on dry land. That when they were hungry, he fed them. When they were thirsty, he gave them something to drink. He said, this is the God that I serve. I don't want you to get it twisted. Yeah, you, you may see me in the king's household. You may see me with this job, but this is just a job because this king hasn't done anything for me. And I just believe that there's somebody in here right now that understands that all these politicians running around here, they arguing and fighting, don't get involved with all of that mess because they haven't done anything for you. But one Friday, one Friday, that king sent another king to go and welcome you into his kingdom. He says that the persistence, he says that I pray day and night. You, you got to learn how to keep knocking sometimes. You got to keep on knocking sometimes. You got to be like the persistent woman that just kept on running by the tent of the judge that says, hey, I know you hear me. You see me out here. I got a question. I need for you to hear what I have to say. Sometimes you just, one little prayer just ain't going to do it. Because God wants to know how much it really means to you. Not that he can't do it, but he want to know how much do you want him to do it. But then it's the perception because he says that I want you to really understand that I am totally dependent on you, Lord. I, I 
can't do this by myself. I mean, there's an old song that I used to love as a little kid at St. Matthew's Missionary Baptist Church, 2412 Osage Street, Nashville, Tennessee, 37209. Well, the pastor is none other than that of W.B. Armstrong. And there was a little group in Wren that was led by his son. We call him Billy. And Billy sung the song that says, Oh, Lord, I want you to help me. Lord, I want you to help me. I can't make this journey all by myself. So, Lord, I want you to help me. That, that Nehemiah understood that I can't make this journey, I can't complete this project, this task at hand, unless, Lord, you are right there with me. So sometimes we run ahead of God. Sometimes we trip over our own feet trying to do things and not talk to God and not wait on God to move some mountains out of the way. And Nehemiah says, Lord, I, I can't do this by myself. And I, that should be our banner cry, is that, Lord, I can't do this by myself. So, Lord, I need for you to help me. Then there was the prayer of repentance, the confession, the admission, and the corruption. He, he got real in the nitty-gritty right here. He, he, he recognized what Israel had did wrong. But not only was he pointing the finger at Israel, he was pointing the finger at himself as well. He says, we, Lord, didn't do right. And, 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 and he's up there and he's wondering, okay, why, Lord, do you have us here? You, you promised you were going to take care of us. I want to go back home, but, Lord, I need for you to talk to me. So as we continue, we had the prayer of recognition, we have the prayer of resignation, we had the prayer of repentance. Because Nehemiah sits there in verse number 6 and 7, he said, For the children of Israel thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. The admission, once again, he says that we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. You got to understand that this prayer takes over a period of four months. Just because God doesn't answer you immediately doesn't mean he hasn't heard you at all. Let me say that one more time. That just because God doesn't answer your prayer immediately, just because you haven't found your burning bush, just because you haven't heard that still small voice doesn't mean he hasn't received what you've asked of him. Because you got to remember that Zechariah prayed for a child, y'all. And we don't know how long he prayed, but he was persistent. And the Bible says the angel of the Lord said to Zechariah, don't be afraid for your prayer has been heard. We don't know how long he's been praying him and Elizabeth for a child, but he was persistent and he just kept on praying for a child. And finally the angel of the Lord showed up, said, don't be afraid, your prayer has been heard. The Bible said there arose a Pharaoh who didn't know Joseph. And due to his insecurities, just Pharaoh enslaved the children of Israel. And for 400 years, they prayed and cried unto God. And God heard them and sent them a deliverer. Hezekiah received some bad news. Somebody done walked into his bedroom chambers and told him, you're about to die. And he turned his face to the wall and had a little prayer, had a little talk with Jesus, as we will say. Had a little prayer with the Lord. And before the man was able to get back out the city, the Lord heard his prayer. As a matter of fact, God tells him directly, I heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. The Psalms are also full of hope and assurance that God hears 
our prayer. Somebody in the sanctuary today has a prayer as David did that states that in my distress, I called upon the Lord to my God and I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice and my cry to him reached his ears. See, sometimes, State Street, we can't see the big picture, but God can. Knowing that God is good and sovereign and always faithful means that we can trust him for the right answer. Even if God's answer to us is no, and even if we don't understand. If what I'm asking God to do isn't his will, then praise the Lord that we have a God that's willing to say no. Because he knows what's best for us. We can always ask for it, but if it's not within his will, it is time for our hearts to match up with his will. Lord, give me the desires of my heart that matches with your will so what's in my heart agrees with your will and therefore it will come to pass. But, 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 but what, 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 what Nehemiah does in the second part of his prayer, he, he asks for restoration. He's a, he, he, he recognized, he, 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 re, he did a resignation, he, he repented, but then he does a restoration. And, and I like what he does because Deacon Amos, he takes a different approach to it. Verse number eight, he says, remember the instructions you gave your servant Moses, saying that if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you amongst the nations. Nehemiah was certainly mindful of the word of God. He knew the word of God. He knew God's word and he sought to live by it and apply its teaching to the current situation. And he humbly pleased the promises of God's word to the Lord as he prays. When you read this, the first word you see is Remember the instructions you gave your servant Moses. When you read that, if we're not careful, what we tend to do is go ahead and classify this as Nehemiah being arrogant. How dare you tell God to remember what he's already said? But, but, but that's not what Nehemiah is doing. This was not a prayer of arrogance, demanding anything of the Lord, or accusing him of being unfaithful. As a matter of fact, it's quite the contrary. See, as Nehemiah prays, he finds comfort and strength from the word. He knew the promises of God concerning his people, and Nehemiah was claiming those promises before God. He said, Lord, you said, if we did this, this is what you'll do. You said, Lord. So what he's actually doing is reviewing the role. He, he's, he's checking the block and said, nope, we didn't do that right. Nope, we didn't do that right. Nope, we didn't do that right. Lord, you said that this is what happens if we do this. That, that, that's what he's saying. Nehemiah was well aware of the holiness of God. And his intolerance of sin and idolatry, he confesses his belief that God would judge sin in the lives of men. God has so declared in his word and Nehemiah, as well as many in his generation, had experienced the judgment of God for sin. And, 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 it, it, and it seems unnatural that one could find comfort in this judgment. But Nehemiah did. Think, think about it. He, he, he's living out being scattered because of what they didn't do right. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I push pause, rewind, and push play again because he says it literally like this. He says that, Lord, we are in this situation because we didn't follow and obey your commands. But he finds comfort in that. Let, let, let me let you know, y'all want to know why he finds comfort in this? 
Because Nehemiah knows that after judgment comes restoration. He knows that when God gets done with getting my attention, when God gets done with getting me back on the right path, then there comes restoration. <laughs> uh, he, he says that once you get done with that medical scare, he's going to restore you. Once he gets your attention and let your finances hit a little turbulence, he's going to get you back on the right path. Once I get you and that relationship back on track, that once I get done judging you, once I remove, that there was a song that they used to say, Lord, look me up and down. And if you see anything that's not right, Lord, remove it from me. Lord, take it away. And I just believe that there are some people in the sanctuary right now that said, Lord, just take it away. Get it out. Purge me. Clean me, Lord. But Lord, I know that as I go through the process of cleaning, Lord, that you're you're going to restore me, Lord, back to my rightful place. Yeah. But Nehemiah gives us the recipe to get from judgment to restoration. He gives us the recipe in this prayer on how to get from judgment, because they're living in judgment right now, to get to restoration. Here it is right here. He says, the first ingredient you need to get from judgment to restoration is repentance. I knew y'all going to get quiet on that one. He said, the first ingredient you need to get from judgment to restoration is repentance. To turn away from what you used to do. Verse number nine, he says, but if ye turn unto me. Nehemiah knew the word of God and he knew the concept of repentance. The people had turned away from the Lord to follow idols and the pleasures of the faith. They had strayed from the path that God had chosen for them. And if they were to enjoy God's blessing and provision in Jerusalem, once again, they must be willing to turn from their sin and turn back unto God. He said, that if my people who are called by my name will fast, pray, and turn from their wicked ways. Come back unto me. Then I will restore them. Then I will heal the land. That I just believe that there's somebody out there right now that's tired of living that life, tired of doing things. If you just turn around, he can restore you. This is the, the most simplest and accurate definition of repentance. See, genuine repentance consists of making a full 180. But we have people who like to do 90, 45, do just a little bit. Not that God is not patient and long-suffering, but sometimes we just have to make up in our own minds that, Lord, for you I'm going to live and for you, I'm going to die. I am sick and tired of trying to please people and get their validation and get their hand clap and get their pat on the back. Lord, it is what it is. Yeah. See, some of us like to live by the word on Sunday and the world on Monday. Some of us like to Read the word on Sunday and live in the world on Monday. Just because we are in the world, we don't have to be of the world. Yes, it's around us, but take good cheer. Jesus said, for I have overcome it and so shall you. But then he says, this is the second ingredient you need. He said, you need some responsibility. 
you, you, you need some response. I, I know, I, I hear you, Sister Blake, and that's the hardest part right there. You, you need to turn repentance, but you also need to take responsibility for your own actions. See, the people knew what they needed to do. They knew what they needed to do. They needed to turn and go back to the Father. But it was up to them to fulfill that responsibility to God. They must decide to turn from their sin unto the Lord and honor the word of God by following and keeping his commandments. See, you and I know what to do. We know what is expected of us according to the word. We are responsible, y'all, to live lives that honor the Lord and follow his direction. If we do not follow the Lord and receive his blessings, we have no one to blame but ourselves. That's what Nehemiah says in his prayer. Y'all, I told you he, he does it completely different. He, he doesn't get down and get through all the thank yous. He gets to the point of recognizing where he and Israel had messed up. We have turned from you, Lord. We know what to do. We just didn't do it. But then... I like Nehemiah's prayer because what he does is he says, okay, you, you got the repentance. We, that's, that's us. And the responsibility fall upon us. Now, if we repent and take on responsibility, God will renew us. Lord, if I say I'm sorry and turn from all the things that I've not tell them on Sunday I'm sorry and then Monday I'm right back doing the same thing that I did once before. No, make a 180. Lord, I'm sorry. And I rededicate my life to you. That's our response. But then the Lord says, He's going to kick in, and he's going to do the renewal. He says, Lord, you said, but you return to me. If you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are from the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Let me let you know, I don't know who's sitting in the congregation right now and what you're struggling with and what you're battling with right now, that maybe you're online right now and you are struggling with something right now. I don't care how far you have strayed, how long you have been gone, the Lord has the ability to bring you back to a place of good standing. He said, I don't care where you at, how far you've been there, I'm going to gather you and I'm going to bring you back to a place that I have set for as my name. Yeah. That's why we got to be careful at judging people. Because God says that I'll restore them, not you. You couldn't do that to yourself. You needed my help to get to where you are right now. How dare you close the doors on somebody and don't want to help somebody and you got your nose all turned up at them because you think that you're better than them. If you don't set yourself down. Yeah, he says, I will do the renewing. Yeah, that's why the psalmist says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud of the mirror. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. See, th 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 this is the part right here that David said in the Psalms. He says, many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Based on what the Lord will do, it will gather other people to be, because some people have wrote you off. Some people have counted you out. Some people say you're no good. 
You'll never make it. You'll always struggle in life. But baby, when Jesus steps into your life and turn your life around and bring you up, hey, he picked me up. He turned me around and he planted my feet on some solid ground. He said the people are going to be amazed. They're going to be looking and they're going to say, hey, it was nobody but Jesus. God promised renewal and restoration for those who turned from sin and sought to follow him. Even though they endured chastisement and were scattered, he will once again restore them to their homeland. <laughs> but then what he does, Nehemiah, in this prayer, in this prayer, he, he does a remembrance speech. Nehemiah rehearsing the heritage of Israel before the Lord. He finds comfort in knowing that God has chosen them and promised to sustain them. <laughs> and Nehemiah is finally getting to his close. The close of this prayer, he is reminding himself of who he is and whose he is. Not once have we heard Nehemiah pray about a doggone wall. Not once in all 11 verses have we heard Nehemiah pray about a doggone wall. He just prayed that Lord strengthen me, be with me, help me, hold me, guide me, lead me. Hold me, guide me, I'm sorry, Lord. Hold me, guide me, lead me, instruct me. I'm sorry, Jesus. Hold me, guide me, lead me, speak to me. Jesus, I'm sorry, Lord. Hold me, guide me, instruct me, lead me. Lord, I don't know what I'm doing, but Jesus, lead me. Hold me, guide me, talk to me, speak to me, hold me, guide me, rock me in the craters of your heart. Lord, I need you. He didn't get to a wall yet. Before you take on any project, pray to God to strengthen you for the project. Verse number 10, I'm, I'm done. He says, they are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant, Lord, and to the prayer of your servant, to your people, who delight in revering your name. Lord, I'm just asking right now, give me success today by granting him favor in the presence. Lord, just, just, Lord, hear my prayer. And then he starts to break it down. He starts to do a remembrance. He starts to remember the people. Because as he prays that Nehemiah rejoices that they are a people of God. That God sought them out and chose a relationship with them. That they were not an average or ordinary group. That they were the servants and the people of the true and living God. And we too right now State Street that we can rejoice that we are his people. Yeah. That when we go to the Lord in prayer, that he will hear us and he will be attentive. But not only did Nehemiah pray for the people, he prayed for a pardon. That even though they found themselves in bondage, chastised of the Lord, but they were still his chosen people. 
those whom he has redeemed upon himself. The Lord had brought Abraham out of idolatry. He brought Israel out of Egypt, and he would lead them out of captivity, that they were his people. And the Lord will forgive that if you ask truly huh, and humble yourself, huh, that he will toss your sins huh, into the sea of forgiveness, huh, never to be remembered anymore. Huh. The world can't claim the promise of redemption huh, or take comfort in it, huh, but they could huh, because they are saved by grace. Huh. We have been bought with a price. Huh. We have been cleansed of our unrighteousness through the blood shed of Jesus. Huh. You'll help me close this, won't you? Huh. Not only did Nehemiah huh, pray for the people, not only did Nehemiah huh, pray for a pardon, huh, but he also prayed for some power. Uh, he, the report that Nehemiah received from Jerusalem was discouraging at best. Uh, but Nehemiah decided uh, that I will take comfort in the Lord. Uh, he knew the task was great, uh, impossible within human abilities, uh, but he rested in God of redemption, uh, the one who possesses great power uh, and a mighty strong hand. Uh, the task we face uh, is overwhelming at times. And I realize uh, that our world is dark. Uh, and I realize uh, that our world is cold. Uh, and it grows darker and darker uh, each sinful day. Uh, there are fewer days uh, than ever before uh, who are concerned uh, with the ways of God. Uh, it may seem like uh, it is a momentous task. Uh, but take courage, uh, because we do not, uh, I say again, uh, take courage, uh, because we do not, uh, we do not, uh, we don't walk alone, because uh, he's right there with us. He said, I'll never leave you uh, or forsake you, uh, that I'm right here with you, uh, that as you go down the roads, uh, I'm right there with you. Uh, when you're dealing with detours, uh, I'm right there with you. Uh, when you're dealing Dealing with the devil, huh? I'm right there with you. Is there anybody here right now huh, that know that the Lord huh, is right there with you? He guides you. Huh? He holds you. Uh, he's going to rock you uh, in the cradle of his arms. Uh, he says, I got you uh, in my hands, uh, and I won't let uh, nobody uh, pluck you out. Uh, can I give you uh, this morning? A sad order of scripture uh, because uh, it says in Philippians, uh, the fourth chapter uh, and the 13th verse, uh, that I can do all things uh, through Christ uh, that gives me strength. Uh, can I give you another sad order? Uh, Ephesians 3, uh, starting at verse number 19, uh, that says, uh, and to know the love of Christ, uh, which passeth knowledge, uh, that ye might be filled with uh, with all the fullness of God. Huh? But verse number 20, huh, that I love the most, huh, that says, now unto him, huh, who will be able to do exceedingly, huh, abundantly, huh, above all that we ask huh, or think, huh, according to the power huh, that working with us, huh, we are more. Huh. We are more. Huh. We are more. Huh. We're more than conquerors huh. through Jesus Christ huh. that saved us, huh. that we can do it. Huh. We got it. Huh. I believe in the power. Huh. But then Nehemiah, he's not done just yet. Huh. He finished this prayer huh. with a big finish, huh. with a big bang. Huh. Nehemiah states huh, their devotion. Huh, he states their desire. Huh, and he states their dependence. Huh, they were devoted to God huh, and God alone. Huh, and their desire huh, was to worship God huh, in the land huh, that he promised them. Huh, and Nehemiah said huh, that we depend upon you, Deacon Amos. Huh, oh, Lord, huh, grant us this mercy. Grant us this mercy. 
Won't you help us right now? Won't you hold us right now? Won't you? But then I like what Nehemiah did when he prayed. He remembered all the things that God had did for him. He remembered everything that the Lord had did. Even when they did wrong. Even when they didn't do right. God was right there with them. He was right there with them. And y'all know I'm an old soul. And sometimes I find myself going back watching these old TV shows. I like the Andy Griffin show. I like going to Mayberry. I love, I love Lucy. And I dream of Jenny. I love those shows. I love Matlock, huh, cause ain't nobody like Ben Matlock. Huh. He can solve a case huh, and defend somebody, huh, all within 55 minutes, huh, and get them off huh, of the crime. Huh. But the, the show that I really like, Deacon Amos, is the Golden Girls. I love Blanche, Sophia, Dorothy and Rose. I love those ladies, because those ladies are something else. Although I like the show, I like the theme song. And I like the fact that they paying homage and recognition to somebody for being a friend. And I believe that Nehemiah closed his prayers with the song from Golden Girls. Thank you uh, for being a friend. Uh, travel down the road and back again. Uh, your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. And if I invited, if I threw a party and invited everyone I knew, you would see the biggest gift you get from me. And the card attached would say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a friend. Well, thank you, Lord, for being a friend. Because one Friday, you threw a big old party. You threw a big old party. Thank you for being a friend that's always looking down, that's always taking care of me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for protecting me. Cause what Friday on a hill called Calvary, they hung you high, they stretched you wide, and you died for me, died for you. Put him in a borrowed tomb where he stayed there all night Friday, all day Saturday, but early that Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for watching out for me. When I couldn't do for myself, Lord, you did for me. When I didn't know my left from my right, you was right there, Lord. So let me say it one more time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a friend. That's Nehemiah's prayer, y'all. He ain't even prayed about a doggone wall. He ain't talk about no brick masons. He ain't talk about no materials. He just said, Lord, strengthen me. Guide me as I go forth, Lord. Speak to me. Hold me. Guide me. Sometimes that's what our prayer needs to be. Sometimes we don't have to sit up here and, Lord, give me this, give me that. Ask the Lord to just direct your path. Be a light, Lord, and direct my path, Lord. Because I don't, as my, we don't know what we're doing. We, we don't know what we're doing. But we rely on the Holy Spirit to guide us. And that's what Nehemiah is saying, is that before you do anything in this world, take on any projects 
Pray about it. Pray about it. I said this once during my interview period here. Dick. Um, the solution to your problem is older than the problem itself. God already got an answer to your problem way before you even brought that problem to him. He just want to know, can you come and have a conversation with me? Just, just, on, just on the other day, um, there was a conversation between me and another church member here. And it was being sent by a third party. There was a mediator. There was somebody in between. So this person would text me on behalf of them. I would text them back to tell them what I had said. And it was going back and forth, back and forth. And then finally, I decided that in the first rule of communication, be direct. So I called the person up myself. And we had a nice, lovely conversation. And everything was resolved. Everything was worked out. Didn't nobody get mad at anybody. Sometimes, stop going through other people and go to God directly. Ask God directly. Go to him. We have a right to the tree of life. Went that Friday. You know why us preachers always have to put them on the hill called Calvary? It's because so much came from that Friday. That we now have a right to go to God through Jesus Christ. Won't you utilize that? If your job gave you benefits and you never utilize it, God has given us benefits. Won't we use it? The doors of the church are now open. Maybe there's somebody here right now that don't know what is going on. Maybe somebody here right now has a major project ahead. You feel like it's something that you need to do. Well, let me suggest to you that it starts with prayer. It starts with prayer. Maybe your life is not where it needs to be. Maybe you're not so sure about if you're saved or not. You can have a talk with God. You can come down to this altar right now, any of these fine gentlemen and ministers and reverends will pray with you and for you. That's why I'm so excited the Lord put on my heart to start a prayer of lion ministry where you can call in and pray and leave your prayer. It starts with prayer. Before we do anything, it starts with prayer. Seek his face. God wants to hear from us. He really do. He sits back and he just looks and says, I wish this child would come to me and talk to me. He wants you to talk to him. And right now, if maybe you don't want to come down to the altar, maybe, maybe, maybe you're still scared, you, you, you can say this prayer right here, right at the pew. You can say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I obtain forgiveness of sin. I receive your life. I receive the abundance of God's grace and the gift of righteousness through your son, Jesus Christ. You can come right now in the watch care. If you're just passing through Bowling Green, you can just come in the watch care right now and we'll be here for you. You can come by letter if you feel like you need to move your membership from one church to another. You can come on the Christian experience. That you, like Nehemiah, you know God's word, but now you need something to help strengthen you and support you and give you a solid foundation. Or maybe you can come right now because you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and you want to know more about him. You want to have that open relationship with him. You can come now as a candidate for baptism. Won't you come? Won't you come?
There is no such thing as a perfect church. If you're looking for a perfect church, then it messed up when I walked in at 848 this morning. There's no such thing as a perfect church. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I'm letting go of my problems and asking you to handle them. I'm letting go of my hurt and I'm asking you to heal me. I'm letting go of my fear and asking you to sustain me. I'm letting go of my worries and asking you, Lord, to bless me. The Lord, I, I, I want to rekindle that relationship with you. The back in the day, Lord, when we were had the telephone in the house, and when we would meet somebody new that caught our attention, some young lady, some young man, we'll stay on that phone all day long, all night long. Just talking, Lord. Well, Lord, we want to rekindle that feeling that we had then with you, Lord. Well, we can stay and talk to you all day long, Lord. No certain time, no certain place. Knowing that you hear us, Lord, and that you will answer us. Now, we understand, Lord, that you may not give us the answer right then and there. But, Lord, at least we know you hear us. And it's, if our prayer is within your will, Lord, then it will be done, Lord. Lord, maybe there's somebody right now that's watching online that don't know you. But Lord, what we want to do, Lord, is extend the invitation to them right there where they sit, Lord, that they can have a relationship with you. And what comes with this relationship is a 24-7 access the deacons of the old church, when they had devotion, would say, Jesus is on the main line. Tell them what you want. And as they kept on singing, they'll go by verse by verse, and they'll say that the line is never busy. So we want to extend to somebody right now that understand that the line is never busy. You can have a conversation with him anytime you want. Lord, we're just asking right now, Lord, that you touch somebody and let them know that they, they, they're teeter-tottering right now, Lord. They're on the mark, Lord, of trying to make a decision or not. Guide them, Lord. Hold them, Lord. Lead them, Lord. Speak to them, Lord. And let them know that it starts with prayer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church all together say, amen. Before we do anything, anything in this world, let's have a conversation with the master, shall we? Talk to God. Even though Nehemiah was talking to God, he still had duties within the king's palace, which shows that he simultaneously did his job and had a conversation with God. You don't have to stop everything you're doing. Even on your job, you can talk to the Lord. He got you. He'll hold you. He'll take care of you. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. I just thank God for each and every one of you all this morning. Please be reminded that our announcements are outside on our digital signage. It's also on our Facebook page. Please remember to go to our website and uh, register for the members-only section in which you can also put the app on your phone so you can be up to date with everything that is coming up. Be advised that Martin Luther King Day is coming up. We have a service here that will be provided as well um, in honoring of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Amen? Amen. If all hearts and minds clear, let's stand to be dismissed. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We bless your holy name, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. We remember what you said in your word, Lord, that 
you will never leave us or forsake us. But Lord, we also now know that we need to tap into the benefits that come with being your child. And we don't have to be afraid to talk to you, Lord, that everything that we do for you must include you, Lord. So Lord, right now we make this decree and declaration that we will start with prayer before we do anything. And the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, making you perfect in every good work to do his will. Working in him that is well pleasing in his sight, God who be glorified through Jesus Christ. And the church all together say, Amen. Amen.